And so when I say that the vegans aren't ethical vegans, they're just vegan for ethical reasons. I make a clear cut distinction. How much does the loaf of bread cost? Give me a price. What's a loaf of bread cost? Two euros. Two euros. It's probably a pretty crappy loaf of bread. What's a good loaf of bread cost? Three and a half. Easy. And could we say there's a pound of wheat in the loaf of bread? I know there's not, but it's close. It's close. Half a kilo of wheat and a loaf of bread, something like this. That's a big loaf. It's yeah. a big loaf. It's a four euro loaf. What's a farmer pay for a pound of wheat? <laughs> to feed his cattle. Feed his cattle? Yeah. During the winter, he's got over winter in Germany, he's got to feed his cattle. 90% of all the grain grown in the world is grown to feed livestock. It's not for people. So what's the farmer pay for a hundred weight? A hundred weight is a pound of wheat? No, a hundred weight is a hundred pounds. Like 40. A hundred pounds. 45 kilos. Probably not more than 30 euros. Probably not more than three and a half. Euro? So, so when you buy a loaf of bread, Mr. Vegan, what, what percentage of the total cost of wheat produced in the world did you pay? Here's a tricky little math question. See if you can figure this out. 90% of all the grain grown in the world is grown for Livestock feed. But farmers pay one one hundredth of what we pay when we buy grains. We pay a hundred times as much on average. It's not the same product. It's a lot more labor intensive to produce no, a loaf of bread. No, no argument. Nonetheless, you're still paying a hundred. Sugar is cheaper than grain. Salt is cheaper than grain. Almost everything added to the loaf of bread is cheaper than the grains. So by adding those, they add those products in to make the grains cheaper to produce the loaf of bread, not more expensive. Taste. Maybe and taste, but not always even and taste. Why do they pack sardines so close together in a can? Because sardines are cheaper than the oil they're packed in. Mm. Why do they add salt to peanut butter? Because salt is cheaper than peanut butter. Okay, and, and, and maybe flavor, you know, excitotox uh, excitotoxins and stuff, but you can certainly buy salt-free peanut butter, but it costs more. Yes, exactly. Why does it cost more to have no salt in your peanut butter? Right. So what, when a, I mean, when you buy a box of puffed wheat cereal or something, and it costs three or four euros for a quarter of a kilo. Some of the starch we sell, we sell in is so expensive. Okay, so if humans only consume 10% of the total grains grown, mm -hmm. all the almost all the starches, in fact. But if we only consume 10%, but we pay 100 times as much for it, mm. how much of the total cost, how much of the total revenue generated do humans pay for, and how much do cows, farmers, pay for it? And I think you'll find that Hundred times ten percent is more than one time ninety percent. Therefore, 
And you can do the math to find out exactly how much that is at any point that you want, what that relationship is. But you're going to find out that, that every time you buy a grain product, you are subsidizing the meat and dairy industry. And every single one of those ethical vegans is on a starch-based diet in order to save the cows. But they're killing the cows. In the same way, in the exact same way that every time you eat dairy, you're killing another veal cow. Or every time you eat veal, you are promoting the dairy industry. It's the same ratio, same relationship. Now, we go a step further, and we say, how much does a liter of olive oil cost? An average? Hmm. We just need a number, it doesn't $10? matter. $10? That's expensive. Yeah, yeah that's like six that's euros, seven euros. For a liter. It's not a lot. It's, by the way, it's just a euro. You never say euros, actually. Supposed to. Six or seven euro. Thank you. Ah, it's like the news. It's like news. news. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's the opposite no. of new. <laughs> <laughs> What's left over after you make olive oil? Pulp. What's that cost? Did you ever buy that? Have you ever bought that in the store? No, that's being fed to animals. To, who, to the animals. Mm -hmm. What does it cost? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> it's just waste. So every time a vegan pours olive oil onto his salad or uses olive oil for anything other than his machete, I use olive oil, I put it on my machete. It keeps the rust down. By sunflower oil? Some, kind of, some kind of oil. Yeah, mm -hmm. I use oil though. Mm -hmm. I put it on my ice skate blades. Keeps the, oil, keeps the rust down. But that's, that's like a drop every two years. <laughs> every time you're using oil, you're killing cows. I hate you. You're subsidizing the, the dairy industry. You're promoting the dairy industry. And when I give that lecture at animal rights seminars, oh boy, they're not thrilled. They're not happy. They listen. Wait. But they go, you know, and I go, well, there's only one option. If you're going to be. If you're because gonna they say, don't want to give up those foods. Of course not. Okay, but they don't, but, wow, but they don't get it? No, they don't want to get it. They don't want to get it. it. It's willful ignorance. Wow. They don't want to get that. To those things, that the only option for, a, for an ethical, they call themselves, uh, they, call, they, they say I'm vegan for ethical reasons. But then once in a while they'll call themselves ethical vegans. So I do a, I do a presentation on what is an ethical vegan. Mm. An ethical vegan is certainly not a person who promotes subsidizing. subsidizing the dairy industry. We pay all the costs for the dairy industry by using grains and using oils. Breakfast cereal is all about the dairy industry. Damn, you never make that connection. That's why you're here. And so while I... Like, that's it. You see where you, you are? But, but the thing is, what I want to see is how you leapfrog, how you use me for a springboard. Where are you going to go with it? But, but just out of curiosity, have you read the Star Tribution? No. No? Bits and pieces. I have no interest. You would read it for a debate, though? There is no debate. I'd crush him. Yeah, exactly. You would 100%. He, he does not have a leg, yeah. not even one. To stand. He's got, he's got absolutely nothing. He's promoting the use of salt when he used to not, because, mm -hmm. no, because food. his exact quote was, "Who would eat the ideal diet if it didn't taste good?" It's like the doctor that says, well, okay, "No how one could, would do it if I told him to do it." So why don't even tell bother? Him. Yeah. Who? How could the ideal diet not taste good? You're trying to convince me that the ideal diet doesn't taste That's good? That's a very good point. You 
have to add salt to it in order for it and to change it. And sugar. And B12. And, and. And when did this become ideal? The diet with no vitamin C? Yeah. We're going to go for the vitamin C free diet that doesn't taste good. Well, the star solution is including vegetables, to be fair. Because without them, you can't. Wouldn't work. What happens to a man on bread and water? Gonna become very pasty. <laughs> what happens to prisoners who are sentenced to bread and water? Oh, there's no vitamin C in bread, is there? Yeah, it's not usually bread and water. It's gruel of some kind. It's oatmeal or something. They don't actually give them that much bread you know, when you're on bread and water. They're gonna definitely suffer. They're gonna die. It's a death sentence. Mm. It's like putting you in the dark and sentencing you to live in the dark. You can't live in the dark for a long, long time. And you can't live on bread and water. That's the ideal diet. What happens when they put you on bananas and water? You do pretty well. Pretty well. You do well, you huh? For years. Years. Who knows how long? Who knows? We don't even know. <laughs>